When you try something once and it doesn't seem to be working out, do you just give up? When things go wrong in your life, do you keep trying or do you give up and go home? Do you come back stronger, more creative, more insightful and try again? When someone does something to you, something that hurts your feelings, something that you didn't like and you consider it to be bad, do you just never try again or do you stay for the fight? Knowing when to keep pushing and knowing when to quit is two sides of the same coin. For this episode though, we will focus on building resiliency and perseverance. A skill that can help you build belief that you can deal with anything that comes your way and you can always learn from it and get back to it. Welcome my friends to another episode from Inside Treasures. My name is Fabus and I love to challenge myself and those around me for the purpose of growth. This podcast is about helping you to heal, to change and to grow. When I was a little boy, I used to play with Lego and my brother was older than me. So I would make something, fix it, spend all this time making it look the way that I wanted it, being creative and all this stuff, just getting lost in Legoland. And then my brother would come along and he would just bash it. He would bash it, he would break it into pieces and I would be frustrated at first. Yes, I would cry here and there, I would whine other times, I would say, why did you do that? But it taught me something very valuable. And that valuable lesson was perseverance. It taught me to get back on my horse and to keep riding. No matter what came my way, no matter what happened, no matter the frustration, the failure, the anger, it was about me making something new again, having another go. It helped me become more resilient. It helped me build that belief that no matter what came my way, I could build something new, something different, something better than before. And that thing that I had built and it's gone now, I could either make it similar or I could completely start from scratch. So with time, instead of me getting demoralized and feeling sad about what I had built being broken, it taught me something. It taught me starting over because in life, a lot of times we start something. First, we have the obstacles of not starting, but then we manage to start and then something happens along the way and then we stop. And we find it very difficult to start over. Learning to start over is a skill that we can apply in our life anywhere. It's about being stupid and being humble, pretending as if this thing didn't happen and that you can start over. You can start over and over and over again. We've read it all before. When you fall down, just get up and keep walking. We've seen it with kids when they're learning to walk. They take a couple of steps, they tumble down, they get up and they try again because they're not thinking, I tried to take a step and I fell. They're thinking, I'm trying to get there and this is what I need to do. So keep having a go at it again and again and again until you win. But be careful of your ego. If you're being driven by your ego, if your ego is driving you around and you're not in control, you have to take a step back and regain your control. But the main thing to remember is be humble, be stupid, and just start over and over and over again. No matter what direction you're going to, no matter what it is that you're trying to achieve in your life, no matter the adversity and the things that keep pushing you backwards, you keep pushing forwards. But just starting over isn't always enough. There must be something that we learn from the process. We must learn from the feedback. Along our way, something happened. What was that something that happened? That was our feedback. There was an action and then there was a reaction. Because a lot of times when we fail, we, we, we just forget, we get demoralized, we focus on our failure so badly and we forget to get the feedback. We forget to learn. And we can do that quickly. We don't have to sit there and weep over the problem, weep over the failure for the next 20 years and say, I'm never going to do that ever again. And that's it. Because I did it once and it didn't work out. See it as an experiment. Stop dwelling on the failure and get the learning and then move on. What did I just learn? What did this happen? What can I learn from this? Notice the feedback that you're getting all the time. Whatever we are, we're constantly getting feedback. Repetition might be the mother of skill. But without corrections, without adjustments, we're just doing the same thing over and over and over again. And that is very difficult to change our results. A lot of times we make the same mistakes over and over again, but the way that we learn is because at some point we notice what we can do differently. When we can get feedback, when we notice and look for that feedback, we can be quicker 
when we're asking for help, someone else might come in and tell us and what, where to pay attention, how to change a little bit things. And the differences can be tremendous when we make the right adjustments, when we pull the right levers. So it's about also finding the right levers, the right things to change. But remember that without getting the feedback, without the corrections based on that feedback, we're like the person who, who keeps stubbing their toes at the end of the bed every single night. And we do it again and again and again. And then we keep reaping the pain and the pain and the pain. Yes, we can keep having a go at things. Yes, we can start over and over and over again. But if we're not learning through this process, then we're working backwards a little bit. So one thing is to build that belief, build that strength of starting over no matter what and just pretending to be dumb and humble and just say, I'm just going to try again. But the other thing is like, what just happened? What can I learn? And through this process of doing things over again and learning from the feedback, we develop something called a thick skin. What's the, what's the thick skin? It's just like things are not getting through. Yes, we might fail, but instead of the usual being demoralized and it's the end of the world, we actually become a little bit numb to that feeling. And all of this starts with cultivating a foundation of belief for growth and self-esteem, one that will fundamentally grow your self-worth. It will change the way you see yourself. What's the foundational belief that we can cultivate? The foundational belief that we can all cultivate is that I can deal with anything that comes my way. It's building and cultivating that internal belief and most of all remembering because these things are happening in your life. There are times where things were bad and you found a way to deal with it. But it's also knowing that you can do that at any time because you have all the resources that you need within you. A problem that I often see is that with fear there's doubt and insecurity and all these things, they play each other and they lead us to believe that if we walk into this situation, all that would happen is we would crumble. So we shield ourselves. We shield our children from challenges, from such misfortunes that they might come their way and crumble them. But by doing that, we're degrading our society. We're removing the self-belief in the future generation that they can deal with whatever comes their way. Of course, we don't want our younger generation to suffer. But we perpetuate their suffering by not allowing them to learn from themselves, not allowing them to think, to strive, to ferment in their own unique way. Without this, there is no growth. Instead, we can teach them to understand and cultivate their foundational belief that they can deal with whatever comes their way, that they can be strong enough, that they can work it out, that they can start over. And we can teach that to ourselves, of course. Every time we deal with adversity, Every time we deal with fear, with doubt, with insecurity, that we can manage this, we can cope with this, that we can find a solution. As my mother likes to say, there's no problem without a solution. All the problems have the solutions and we got solutions or we can find people who can help us to get those solutions. You see, when we're cultivating those kind of beliefs, our self-growth, our self-esteem just grows immensely. We're able to see how even if we walk into a situation that can be difficult or if something bad comes our way, we can withstand it. We can deal with it. We can cope with it. We can be resilient. Even if we fall, we can get back up. No matter the outcome, no matter the adversity, no matter the pain or the wounds, I know that I can move past this with strength. Whatever this is, I will not submit. I will not be defeated. I will not bow to this. I'm resourceful, I'm powerful, and I can move on. That's how it always has been, and that's how it will always be. When we're coming from such a place of strength, there's very little that can happen that can move us and shake us. We become unshakable. As my friend Confucius said, our greatest glory is not in never failing, but in rising every time we fall. It's about taking the steps to look after your well being, cultivating the belief that you can do whatever you need to do, that you can deal with whatever comes your way, it actually lowers your, your stress. The stress that you have in your life of things that might come, it decreases the fear that you might get on certain situations that you're trying to walk into. It helps you go towards those challenges outside of your comfort zone to help you build that up and actually be strong because you know that no matter what happens, you'll be able to deal with it. Resiliency is not just the ability to bounce back, but also the capacity to adapt in the face of challenging circumstances and times. And this is while maintaining a stable mental well-being. Resiliency isn't just a personality trait, 
that you just have or you don't have. It's something that we can all take steps to achieve. It's something that we can all cultivate. And we can cultivate the beliefs that come with it. The beliefs that can help you be resilient in life. I'm here to help you heal, change and grow. If there's something that resonated with you, something that you need help with, something you need to be more resilient with and building those beliefs within you, give me a shout at podcast.insidetreasures.com. Thank you everybody for listening to this episode. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and follow. If this content is delivering value to you, it is meaningful to you, please go to iTunes, go to Stitcher and rate and review this podcast. If you think that anyone, anyone within your circle that could benefit from this episode, please share this episode with them. Sharing and reviewing can help build up this community to give as much value as possible and to help as many people as we can. Until next time, my friends, let peace guide your life, let love guide your heart and reason guide your thoughts.